Two suspicious clowns walk into the middle of your group having a convo privately about the situation that they currently had with Rimuru. And for some reason, they think that they can just trust them instantly. It's pretty freaking hilarious. It really is. I'm just like, really? Really? You, you're, you're gonna trust two shady looking individuals dressed up as clowns coming in and offering you power? Like... Come on, man. Like, they even legit said that they were drawn to the hatred and anger that they were giving off. So if anyone is like that, acting like they're drawn to that, obviously they're not good individuals. I'm just like, wow. Okay. And what's hilarious is that the dude's underlings, legit, before they left him, they're like, he's very intelligent, he's very smart, he's not going to be tricked that easily, proceeds to get tricked. I'm like, right, okay, I, I see where you're going with this. Like, the man is so blinded by his revenge and anger towards what happened to Emilium and Rimuru that he straight up is wanting to get revenge, even if it is going to cost his life. I'm just like, dude, you're not, you're not thinking too clearly on this situation so anyways let's get right into it this episode of reincarnated as a slime is very slow now i'm not saying it's bad because when i mention the word slow people might automatically jump to the conclusion and think that this is a terrible episode that is not what i am saying it just, this is a very slow episode compared to what we've been getting since the end of the Orc Lord. Like, this is a very slow-paced episode. When you really take a moment to think about what this episode is about, it was mainly just seeing Rimuru talking with, like, the ambassador of another kingdom of the guild and wanting to construct a road, open up trade, seeing just, you know, this situation with Charybdis potentially coming to attack or is coming to attack, you know, Temptus. I mean, overall... I mean, it's a very, you know, slow episode, and it's mainly just build up for the events to come next week and the episodes after that, and honestly, I appreciate that, I really do, because I'm glad that this was a slow-paced episode, it needed to be slow-paced to really build up the threat to Charybdis and what its capabilities really are, because we got some really stunning information in this episode about it. Apparently, Charybdis is the child of Veldra, which is the dragon that Rimuru absorbed in, you know, the first episode. Which, technically, he didn't fully absorb him. He's not, quote-unquote, dead or anything like everybody else. But, basically, Veldra is inside Rimuru for the time being. And, that's the point here. Is that Charybdis is, like, a child or an offspring to Veldra. Which, Veldra is a monster. Like, straight up, ridiculously strong. You cannot really like, beat that man in a 1v1. Like, he's that strong. And in this case, seeing in this episode revealing how strong this creature is, it puts in perspective on how powerful Veldra was, or is, and how Rimuru, technically, he got really lucky when he managed to meet someone as strong as Veldra, and Veldra gave him a name, which in turn got him to be as strong as he is right now. So, Rimuru really lucked out. In the grand scheme of things, the man hit the biggest of jackpots of all time to be able to be where he's at right now and Charybdis being built up is basically saying is Rimuru on the level of the demon lords it was implied a couple episodes back that the orc lord or the orc disaster was you know a demon lord or like a so uh, like close to a demon lord that's what was implied and the orc lord was definitely not weak by any means Let, let's just be real here but I highly doubt it's like in-game level top of you know everything in this world, there's bound to be a lot more things out there that is stronger than the Orc Lord. Milium is a perfect example. Milium probably easily could have wiped out the Orc Lord like it was nothing. I mean, even in the last episode, there was talks about the Demon Lords literally wanting to create a puppet-like Demon Lord just so they can control behind the scenes. So, I mean, the, you know, the Orc Lord wasn't anything to really freak out about in terms of where everybody else's strength is at and Charybdis apparently has got you know the demon lords all up in like arms like holy crap Milium you know is probably one of the only individuals in the town that could potentially stop it I mean Rimuru is a broken man like in terms of just how strong he is but when you look at the level of this creature and what it is actually or what it came from you're like I don't think it's going to be really that easy to bring this creature down, especially how this episode spent so much time 
building it up to its revival at the end of the episode, and revealing that it was using the corpses of, like, lesser dragons to create these megalodon-like spirits to fly around it, like, 13 megalodon-like spirits, it's a pretty powerful creature, and it's gonna definitely be something that's gonna take probably the entire force of Rimuru's army to bring down, which I hope it isn't a straight up 1v1. That's what I think many could probably agree with me on, is that one of the things that I would want to see from this upcoming fight is that even if Rimuru is going to quote unquote, you know, absorb Charybdis and get its power and get stronger and eventually get to the same level as, you know, Demon Lord Leon, I still think, at the very least, the entirety of Rimuru's army should work together to bring it down. You know, whittle it down, weaken it to where Rimuru can go in and absorb it and get a lot stronger. I would like something like that. And like I said, I think many could agree that would be a great, you know, opportunity to really show how strong Rimuru's army has gotten, how strong this town is, you know, his country. And it's a great way to show his military might where people wouldn't really want to mess with him and start any problems with, you know, Temptus at all. So yeah, that's my overall thoughts on it and what I am hoping happens because I want to be real with you, I actually have only read this far in the manga. I no longer really know what's going to happen, so I'm pretty much about to become an anime only as well. I don't know the end result of Charybdis and how Charybdis is taken down or anything, so like I said, I'm with you all now. I am a complete anime only now, so I do hope it is a legit, like, army versus Charybdis. Emilia may have to step in because it's just so freaking powerful, which in turn would be interesting to see how everybody reacts if Rimuru himself cannot even bring down a monster like Charybdis, and yeah. Also, by the way, I want to talk about the cute little slice of life moments in this episode. Did anyone catch the little rubber slimes in the bath scene with Rimuru? I don't know how many of you caught that, but Rimuru had one on his head and a bunch around him while he was floating in the water. There were little rubber slimes, basically the equivalent to rubber duckies. And I'm just like, that's freaking adorable. Like, look, I've never used rubber duckies or anything in a bathtub when I was growing up, but... No, they're always been cute. And seeing the rubber slimes, I'm just like, that right there, that's merchandise. Like, that is merchandise. Like, I don't know or remember if that was in the manga, but if that really was, it's kind of like the author, the writer, created his own merchandise for to eventually be sold in the real world. For instance, for us. I'm just like, I know for a fact people would buy rubber slimes looking like Rimuru. I mean, yes, I know I would. I mean, the necklace too, the cute little, you know, Rimuru necklace that Million was wearing. I mean, there's a lot of merchandise ideas I'm seeing coming from this series. I'm just like, this is, this is a really high quality series. It literally creates its own merchandise. It's not even like, you know, people behind the scenes like, okay, how can we make something merch from this series? How can we do something? Now, do we make a figure, which, oh, by the way, that figure with Milliam, that's, uh, you know, you know what, no comment, no comment, I'm just saying, like, I might want one, but okay, jokes aside, though, or maybe not jokes, but point is, is that merch is being created by this series by just being written, it's not even literally the people behind the scenes, the marketing team probably even doing it, and which I find pretty freaking cool, so, um, what else is there really to get into, I guess, let's talk about, uh, Phobio, I think that's how you pronounce his name, him falling for what the clowns did to him. So, Phobio, he, he was definitely not a bright man, by any means. I mean, at the very least, he had enough forethought to be able to resign from the Demon Lord and, you know, relie get relieved of his position before he could do his own thing and not be kind of tied politically to the man. Because, I mean, if the man would have caused any problems, for instance, gaining, like, getting revenge against Milium and gaining the power of Charybdis, it would make his entire faction look really bad. So him resigning, effectively, there is some foresight there for, for, to stop problems from eventually arising if, you know, it doesn't work out or pan out with him and he's not able to get what he wants. Which, by the way, it's very obvious he did not get what he wants. He is now either a complete control of, you know, Cryptus, which I doubt, or Cryptus is, you know, using his body very similar to what happened with Shizu many episodes ago when her body was slowly being taken over until Rimuru had to step in. One or the other most likely is going on, and I do think if Rimuru does absorb Cryptus and Phobio is the vessel, I'm under the impression that probably Rimuru is going to have a big talk with him, very similar to the Orc Lord scene, and he's probably going to devour the man and gain his strength. Probably something like that's going to happen. 
But I think that's pretty much about it. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below how you felt about this week's episode of Reincarnating as a Slime. How did you feel about the setup to the character introductions and all that or the development that Fobio got? Be honest in the comments below. And with that, I love you guys. Please be safe. Chibi out.